does the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra work with DJI's new foldable gimbal, the OM4? While I'm using the OM4, these tips should apply to the Osmo Mobile 3 too. 2 as well, not Mobile 3 2, Mobile 3 as well. Anyway, uh, so I'll be trying out various lenses, telephoto, wide angle, ultra wide angle, Plus, how good is this setup for vlogging? Should we use DJI's Mimo app, Samsung's native camera app, or a third-party app like Filmic Pro? The Note 20 Ultra has all these lenses, but how should we use them with a gimbal? I'll also show you how to create beautiful, dreamy shots by adding a Tiffin Black Promise diffusion filter. I'll be going over that and more, so join me and let's discover together. That's my new YouTuber catchphrase, by the way. Discover together, what do you think? Too much like an 80s kids educational TV show, maybe? I don't know. Anyway. First tip is to use the Samsung native camera app with your gimbal. Why? Because you get access to all the Note 20 lenses. And if connected via Bluetooth to the gimbal, the record button on the gimbal triggers the video record in the Samsung camera app. Pretty cool. First, open the Mimo app and connect. Now, choose the mode you want to use for the shot. I already made a couple of videos about choosing modes on the OM4 and OM3 recently, so check those out if you haven't already. Once you have the mode selected, switch out of Mimo and open up the Samsung camera app. So the gimbal will use the mode you selected even when you're using another camera app. Another advantage of using the Samsung camera app with the gimbal is you'll get access to 8K video, uh, the telephoto lens, and 4K video at 60 frames per second. Whereas the Mimo app, at least using it with Android, only allows 30 frames per second and cannot access the telephoto lens. And when you're filming with the selfie camera, the Mimo app limits you to 1080p, whereas the Samsung camera app gives you the selfie cam at full 4K, up to 60 frames per second. Plus there are other advantages to using the Samsung camera app, such as being able to shoot 240 frames per second slow motion and 960 frames per second super slow motion. And none of these can be accessed via the Mimo app, unfortunately. Of course, you won't have access to features specific to the Mimo app, such as story mode, clone me, tracking, and Dyna zoom, and all those kind of features. So if you want to use those features, then you need to stick to the Mimo app. So do you get better quality video using the native app? Well, I grabbed two identical shots, one with the Mimo app and one with the Samsung app, and both are using the standard wide lens. But there's not too much in it, so I'm guessing that the Mimo app is using the HDR10 Plus dynamic range that you get with the Note 20. So I don't recommend using the telephoto when you're capturing a simple forward moving shot with the gimbal. With these types of shots, it suits the wide or ultra wide unless you're following a subject and want a kind of tighter shot with some shallow depth of field. Bear in mind when you're using the telephoto, it can also be harder to track the subject and also any camera shakes will be more obvious. The telephoto can work well though with a shot where you are creating a kind of parallax effect and parallax is where the camera moves left to right or right to left or in a circle and the foreground moves faster than the background. So a telephoto lens compresses the apparent distance between the foreground and background. At the same time, it will exaggerate the parallax effect. So this is the shot using the regular wide lens. And there is some parallax effect. Of course, the closer I get to the foreground, the more you see it. But now, when I use the telephoto, you can see the effect is more pronounced. <laughs> Varying your shots in your video makes your video more watchable. Because if you stick to the same shot every cut, viewers are more likely to lose interest. So adding a cheeky telephoto shot into the mix keeps things more interesting. When we shoot a landscape, we might assume a wide lens is best as it captures more of the view. However, that's not always the case. In this shot, I used the OM4's tripod legs and placed the gimbal onto a solid surface. Now, I use the Samsung native app in auto 
and switched to telephoto. And this shot with the mountains in the background and the village in the midground is much more dramatic when using the telephoto. When I switch to wide, you can hardly see the mountains. But using the telephoto, they look much more impressive. And this is a little bit different to the usual landscape pan shot we're used to seeing with a smartphone. Because we can feel the movement of the pan more, even with these grey clouds overhead. Again, by using the Samsung native app, you get access to the ultra-wide lens. So this gives you more variety in your shots. And when you edit, you can contrast the different flavors. And the ultra-wide will also give you a, a smoother look because the wider the lens, the less bumps and shakes are noticeable. So that's something to bear in mind. So if you're using this setup for vlogging, you're probably going to want to use the front-facing camera. The question is, what looks better? Using the Mimo app, the Samsung native app, or an app like Filmic Pro? While the specs for the Note 20 Ultra say there is only one front-facing camera, when you use Filmic Pro, you're given a choice of two lenses. So it looks like the only way you can use the wider angle lens with the selfie front-facing camera is to use a third-party app like Filmic Pro, for example. Why do photographers get to choose and not videographers, I wonder? Hmm, Samsung being a bit silly there. Anyway, but if you use Filmic Pro, I recommend switching on HDR and leaving all the settings in auto. If you switch the Note 20 Ultra into Pro Video Mode, you get a choice of using different microphones, front, rear or omni, which is both microphones combined. Now, for vlogging and using the front camera, it would make sense to use the front microphone. But while you can switch the direction of the mic in pro video mode, you can't switch to the front facing selfie camera, which is really rather a strange choice from Samsung because surely you would want to switch both the mic and the camera to pointing in the same direction. In pro video mode, you can also switch to a Bluetooth or an external USB mic. But again, you cannot use the front facing selfie camera. Having said that, although I haven't tried it, I'm pretty sure you can still attach an external mic when not in pro video. This is the with the DJI Mimo app. And I think we're using the slightly less wide lens here. Uh, but it seems that you do get the HDR10 plus. Everything is on auto. I haven't locked anything. Um, yeah, I think it works fine. So this is with the Samsung app and I can get 4K. So this is Filmic Pro. I'm using the selfie my, the selfie camera on the DJI OM4. HDR switched on. You, if you have HDR switched on on Filmic Pro, you cannot have, you cannot control exposure. You have to have auto exposure. And yeah, it's actually a maximum, it goes to a maximum of 3K, so you can't get 4K on Filmic Pro. Digital video, especially from a smartphone, which is usually subjected to a lot of sharpening, can be a bit harsh on the eye. It's one of the things which makes professionally shot movies and TV shows easier to watch. So one really simple trick you can try is to add a diffusion filter. This one is by a company called Tiffin, and I already made a whole video about these, so check that out if you haven't seen it already. These Tiffin Black Pro Mist diffusion filters are used by pro cinematographers to add softness and a kind of dreamy quality. They're especially effective when there is a bright light source. The diffusion filter adds a bloom effect around any light. With sunlight filtering through trees, for example, the light blooms out and creates this nice romantic look. But it's also softening the whole image in a kind of more subtle way. But it also reduces contrast on faces and gives a smoother, more flattering look. So you could even use these for vlogging. Or if you're filming a subject, using a Tiffin filter will smooth their skin and add a glow around the highlights. And so that's it for this video and you really need to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, it's much appreciated and I'll see you in the next video.